What's up everybody? It's Hunter Oakley here. I'm back with another video. Commercial Dive School Week 12 is done and in the books. Um, three months down, almost halfway there. It is flying by. But anyways, if you're not familiar with what I'm doing, I'm doing like weekly recaps of how my schooling's going up in Seattle, Washington called the Divers Institute of Technology. So if you have any questions about anything, go check out either of my prior videos or feel free to comment, whatever way to contact me, shoot me a question. Anyways, so I'm gonna hop right into it. Um, this week we started diving again it's technically our second week of hazmat um so monday we started uh this was our first time diving out of the bell so we're tending ourselves as you're an in-water tender um so we dove off a different barge so it took us a little bit lo longer to set up we didn't know kind of the things the way things rolled yet so Monday was a little bit slower, but we just cranked out, I, all of us dove actually that day. We were able to crank out um, all of our, or for most for most part, there was a couple guys that were MPQ, but anyways. Um, so we went down, it was, a, you had to do two different drills out of the bell. One was your emergency gas drill so that's simulating if you were to run out of your main air in the bell you have a emergency gas system which was our hp bottle that's on the bell and you have to simulate going onto your bailout the one on your back and then going on to the emergency gas air um, in the bell so we did that drill and then we did a dr stricken diver drill. So we had one person leave the bell, take his umbilical. You would feed him a few um, feet of it. Well, not a few, but um, 10, 15, 20 feet of it and let him go off and he simulates that he's the stricken diver. And then say, it. so say he heads off, I'm in the bell. I get told from top side, uh, diver one is stricken, unconscious, not responding. I have to go figure out. So obviously the fastest way to him is follow his umbilical. So um, we did that drill. Vice we so say I went and got him. Then we came back, reorganized. Then I went out and acted like I was the stricken diver. Went and hid behind. There was like some big flange out down there kind of just fell face first in the mud and then let my um, dive buddy or partner or whatever um, come and get me, hook up the standby harness, bring you back to the bell and then hoist you up to the bell however he could safely do that. Um, so that was the two drills we did on Monday. We kind of cranked those out um, as a class pretty fast and uh, did good on that. And then Tuesday, I was a standby diver for the riser project. So um, what there is, oh, it's really hard to explain if you have no, no clue what I'm talking about. But anyways, there's two um, big pillars practically. One of them's floating with a chain hooked up to it. The other one is stationary and you have to bring down the dog bone is what they call it. It's a riser clamp. <clears throat> To bring it there's two of them um and so you have to bring down the first one clamp those two together so they're parallel and then the second clamp is a different style of clamp um they actually call the one end of it the donkey dick <laughs> and that's how it gets uh well kind of just looks like that in a sense so that's why they call it that that's the way they said that it was pretty much called in the industry he said there's a bunch of names for these clamps um, so you kind of just got to roll with how it goes. But anyways, the, so one, the bottom one was called the dog bone and then the top one was called the donkey dick. But anyways, I was a standby diver for those guys. So we were kind of, it's not really a project to crank it out in one dive. Um, if you do, it's, that's really good. But, um, I was a standby diver for those guys that were doing that on the first day and they went down and, um, had 
some issues. That's for sure. They they kind of there was a uh, travel line that runs from the bell to the project, so they didn't really have um, shouldn't have had a problem. Well, anyway, someone from the dive before or somehow it magically got untied. So now they didn't have a travel line and both the guys just like started wallowing around in the mud and just making a complete mess down there, tying themselves up. So um, it was kind of cool. I was able to go down there as a standby diver, kind of sort things out, grab the um, travel line. And I knew where the project was because I could was watching them lower stuff down from topside so went down there grabbed the travel line went over tied it off to the project and then i went back to the guys that were having a little bit of issues um and they were able to shoot over the project and get crank it on that a little bit so that was cool to do um because usually as a standby diver you're just sitting around <laughs> waiting you never really get to do anything and, and that one luckily no one was hurt they were just a little discombobulated anyways um wednesday i got to do the 3m project so that's another one i'm yeah i'm kind of bummed i was gonna take pictures um we have little models at school i was gonna take pictures and show them to you guys um so you can understand what i'm talking about but maybe on another video I'll do that. <laughs> or maybe I'll cut this video to the next day and take some tomorrow on Monday. Anyways, I'll figure it out. But um, Wednesday I did the 3M project. Basically what the 3M project is, it's like a big 650 pound gate valve that's um, buried into a concrete eco block and then there off one end of it is probably a I don't know I'd say a four foot section of piping with the flange on each side then there is another gate valve and then there's an elbow flange at the end of it and basically what we do I want to say these are eight or ten inch pieces um, so they're pretty big and um, actually yeah they might even be bigger than that anyways we just have to disassemble them and reassemble them and just practice that using the lift bag so we get like a 500 pound lift bag um, take off each piece and then put them back up together and so when I got down there it was practically all put together um, from the guys before me so I finished putting a few more bolts in just to tighten things up and I cranked down on everything. So I tightened up the whole project and so I got a clean slate to start with. And um, the guy I was working with, we we're, wasn't, I don't know, he wasn't helping as much as I would have liked him to, but whatever. Um, so we got the whole thing completely disassembled actually except for one piece at the end but I got all the bolts out of it so for the next guys it was perfectly set up all they had to do was crank off that last piece and then they could reassemble it so um, that was a good time that was pretty fun hands-on just a cool project to do and then the last day Thursday um, it's kind of a bummer because I thought I was going to be able to do the riser project um, right off in the morning, but it was a little bit shorter of a day. So he didn't want to, and the guys before on Wednesday, they took all the parts out from the riser project and all the tools, everything. So they didn't want to bring stuff down on our last day of diving and then have half the project in the water and half of it. So for the next class to come in, they'll be confused and not even know what the, the clamps look like. So um, we weren't able to do the riser project. I wasn't able to get my hands on it, but this is all kind of extra anyways. So it's not the end of the world if I didn't get my hands on it. Um, but we were able to do some like searching signals, like searching patterns with are, so it was me and one other diver. We dove out of the bell and then we would search um, with him. So basically, top side would tell us there's an object in the water. In our case, it was like a small flange with a piece of rope tied to it and a floaty at the top of it. 
and we were told to go down there and it's towards it's either 180 degrees in one direction or it's 180 degrees in the other they told us which way it was um, and then we would do searching patterns so we would basically I would let him for the first time I was in the bell and I was sending him searching patterns so I was telling him go left go right I'm gonna give you five more feet do a bigger sweep and so it was kind of cool you basically just did a big rainbow um, and then you would get fed five more feet do another 180 degrees get fed five more feet another so you know you're searching that whole area because the the uh, person in the bell is kind of directing you okay once I see his umbilical go 180 degrees that way tell him to stop walk out five feet and sweep that way um, so we both got a chance to do that found the object pretty quick um, then once we were done with that we kind of had a little bit more time so we went around um, to that riser project and I was actually able to get my hands on it and check it out and see um, how we would have done it if we were able to bring the clamps down and get them hoisted down and everything um, so at least we got a good look at the project underwater and knows what it know I know what it looks like um, and then in the end, like the last 10, 15 minutes, I was just trying to find, um, miscellaneous bolts and stuff like that around the bottom, kind of have fun doing that. I'll just lay down at the bottom of the projects, anywhere the projects are and kind of dig around in the mud and you're actually able to find quite a few nuts and bolts from prior guys dropping them. And, um, so I did that for like the last 10 minutes cause we had some time to kill and found quite a few bolts and stuff like that nothing too cool i'm trying to find a knife but haven't found one yet <laughs> or cool gopro maybe <laughs> but um so that was pretty much it for this week it was a really productive week um had a good time dove every single day so can't complain about that um so that pretty much wraps it up for the ending of hazmat and in that situation they on the other barge they dove the gorski free flow hat um like i was telling you i think it was two weeks ago i was able to run the um, gorski demand hat but they ran that one over on the other barge um i wasn't able to dive it but a couple of the guys did. They said it wasn't the greatest. It was just super awkward and they're, it really loud because it's a free flow hat, which means it's constantly um, circulating air. There's no demand for it. So a demand regulator is pretty much any of the Kirby Morgans in a sense. Um, it's where you suck in air and it feeds you air and when you exhaust, you exhaust and you can turn on your free flow but um for the most part yeah that's what a demand hat is and a, and a um, free flow hat is constantly pumping air in and out and so it's constantly kind of annoying um and the hats get loud so that's that but um that's pretty much it for week 12. I'm going to wrap things up here. I'll probably put in a picture or maybe a little clip of me going down in the um, wet bell. It's nothing too cool. It's just um, us getting everything ready and to, to um, descend. But and then once we get into water, it gets really dark. I thought it was going to be better footage, but you can't see anything so I'll probably just clip in here at the end a uh, little piece of us getting ready to go down in the wet bell and you can see what it looks like on the inside but anyways that's that and this next week this upcoming week is welding so finally I've been waiting for this I'm pretty stoked so um, this week we start in the classroom and then I'm not sure where we're going from there but I'm excited and ready to go. So thanks a lot for watching, guys. If you guys have any questions about anything with the school or whatever, feel free to hit me up. And yep, thanks a lot. Bye.